All right, so we've done a few of these in class already. Um, I'm just gonna go through the whole review sheet. And so if you wanna pay attention, go ahead. If you wanna skip to a couple of problems that you're uh, confused about, that'd be great too. All right, so let's start. Here we go, number one. We are using these functions here, f of x, g of x, and h of x. And we wanna take f of x, which is 5x plus three. We're gonna add g of x. So we're gonna combine these two functions. So you need to combine all of your like terms. Uh, the x squared doesn't have a friend, it just stays by itself. And neither does the 5x, uh, but three plus two is five. So that would be the answer to number one. All right, number two, um, you're gonna take uh, h of x, which is two x, and you're gonna subtract f of x. Now be careful here, f of x has two parts to it. So you have to subtract both of the parts. So you're going to take this minus sign and you're going to distribute it. And what you do is you end up getting 2x minus 5x minus 3. And then combine your like terms. Well, 2x minus 5x is negative 3x minus 3. So that would be its simplified form. Okay, number three. Now, if you notice, I kind of skipped the directions, which never skipped the directions. But it says perform each function operation and then simplify just 1, 2, and 4. So number three, I don't have to simplify. I'm gonna take g of x and divide that by h of x, and that is it. Don't do anything else. Well, sorry, one more thing. Tell me what x can't be. So if I plug into here and I get zero in the denominator, that means that x cannot be zero. All right, let's move on. Number four, we're gonna take function h, which is two x, times f of x, which is 5x plus 3. It's nice. This is just a simple distribution problem. So you get 10x plus, oh, 10x squared. So simple, I got it wrong. 10x squared plus 6x. All right, so that's four operations, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Um, hopefully you're pretty good on those. Now let's go on to the next ones. So for number five, these you have to um, plug in. So we're gonna evaluate f of five. And f of five is to plug in five into function f up above. So we have five times five plus three, and we get 28. If you can do these in your head, that's great. Okay, number six. Six, we have to do the inside part first. So I need to evaluate what g of negative three is. And g of negative three is to plug negative three into function g, which means I'm gonna square it and then add two. So I get 11, that is not my answer. Then I have to plug into function f. So I wanna take f of 11, plug that into function f up above, so five times 11 plus three, the answer is 58 one answer to these problems down here. Okay, let's look at number seven. We're gonna evaluate f of negative 10 first. Uh, f of negative 10 is five times negative 10 plus three. So that's negative 47. And then I need to take negative 47 and plug it into h. h of negative 47 is two times negative 47, which is negative 94. There we go. All right, number eight. Now, people don't like this little circle here, so you can rewrite this as g of f of zero. So plug zero into function f first. When you do that, you get five times zero plus three is three. Then take whatever you got, which is three, and plug that into function g now. So g of three is, I keep losing my functions, there they are. g of three is three squared plus two, which is 11. So your answer is 11. All right, <coughs> excuse me. h of h of negative two. Start by doing h of negative two first plug negative two into function h, so it's two times negative two, which is negative four, and then do it again. Now take negative four and plug that in. Negative four times two gives us negative eight. 
All right, and then finally, number 10, you will have one of these on the um, test tomorrow. So you're going to take function h of x, which is 2x. You're going to take 2x, and you're going to plug it into function f. So to evaluate f of 2x, you're going to do 5, and then you're going to take the x out of f and plug in 2x in its place. So you get 10x plus 3 when it's simplified. All right, domain and range. So f of x is just simply, it's just 5x plus 3. It's just a line. And so all slanted lines are going to have both a domain and range of all real numbers. g of x is a parabola. Uh, if you remember parabolas from a while ago, g of x is x squared plus 2. And if you were to graph that, you would go up 2 and you would draw your nice U shape. Well, the domain of parabolas is all real numbers. And the range would be y is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, we're going to need to find the inverse of f of x and g of x. So f of x starts out with y. We can change it to y just to make it a little bit easier. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch the x and the y. So x over here, y over there, and then solve. So subtract 3 to the other side, and then divide everybody by 5. And that would be f inverse. The inverse for g is to take y equals x squared plus 2. I think that's g. Let me look again. Yeah, x squared plus 2. And you're going to, once again, switch the x and the y. So x equals y squared plus 2. And now solve for that y right there. So subtract 2 to the other side. Solving for y, we're going to square root. Now this is an equation, and when you square root both sides, you need plus and minus. And so that would be g inverse. All right, 15, you'll have one of these too. So let's first, letter A, graph uh, 2x minus 6. So go to negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, on your y-axis, and count up to over 1. So there's your line. Now, I have two distinct points on here. So my points would be uh, 0, negative 6, and positive 1, negative 4. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch those. 0, negative 6 is now going to become negative 6, 0, and 1, negative 4 becomes negative 4, 1. I'm going to graph those now. So I have negative 6, 0. And 1, 2, 3, negative 4, positive 1. And then that would be the inverse. I don't have to find it. I don't have to switch x and y and do that. I just can switch x and y just in two points and then get it. And as you can see, it should be a reflection over that diagonal right there. All right, page 1 done. Next page. This was all, all of these were from the first quiz that you took. So let's get started. Here we go. Um, we're going to take the cube root of 3 times the cube root of 9, which gives us the cube root of 27, which we all know by now is 3. All right, 17. This is 27 is raised to the 2 thirds, and x is raised to the 2 thirds. x to the 12th is raised to the 2 thirds also. So when it's a power raised to another power, you have to multiply the exponents. So it's 12 times 2 is 24, divided by 3 is 8. Now don't forget to simplify this also. 27 to the 2 thirds is the same thing as saying the cube root of 27, which is 3, and then squaring that number, which is 9. So the complete answer would be 9x to the 8th. All right, 18. We're going to do 64 to the 1 half. That means the square root of 64, which is 8. And then x to the negative 8, we're going to take those exponents and we're going to multiply them and get x to the negative 4th. Now, we are not allowed to leave negative exponents in any of our answers. And so 8 stays put. It doesn't have a negative exponent on it, but the x to the 4th moves to the bottom. It becomes positive. All right, 19. This one, too, we're going to multiply. It's a power raised up to a power. So we get uh, negative 16 
on the bottom, we get uh, 18. So 24 times 3 fourths. And then we rewrite this so that we do not have any negative exponents in any of our answers. Okay, number 20. Same thing, everybody's raised to the negative 15 here. So this becomes x to the 3 fifths times negative 15 gives us negative 9 and y to the fifth. Now, x is unhappy, y is not, y stays put, x moves to the bottom, becomes positive. Okay, 21. If you were to do this in your calculator, it would give you a gross decimal. Um, what you can do is you can do that, go 81 to the negative 3 fourths, and it gives you 0 .037, 0 0.037 repeating. So it's actually a fraction, you can change that into a fraction, and you get 1 over 27. Now, if, you do, if you're wondering, okay, how in the world does that equal 1 over 27? Well, we have a negative exponent, so what we would first start doing is we would drop that down. And then you take the fourth root of 81 and then cube that number. Well, the fourth root of 81 is 3. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is, is 81, so the fourth root is 3, and then 3 cubed is 27, so 1 over 27. Okay, 22. There are 1, 2, 3, 4 different things here, and everybody's raised to the fourth power. So we got 2 to the fourth, x to the 20th, y to the 12th, and z to the 0. Now let's simplify. 2 to the fourth is 16, x to the 20th stays the same, and then this is z to the 0 is just 1, so we're multiplying by 1, so we don't even really need that there. 23, we are going to divide. 6 divided by 9, that reduces to 2 thirds. And now we have um, powers over powers, so we're going to subtract our exponents. So for the x's, we have negative 3 over a positive 2, so we're going to take negative 3 and subtract 2 and get x to the negative fifth. For my y's, we're going to take 4 and subtract negative 2, and you get y to the sixth and then you have to fix anything at the end. So it's 2y to the 6th over 3x to the 5th. It's a negative exponent on that x, so it's got to move to the denominator. Rewrite in radical form. Here's the root. Here's the power. Roots are in the ground on the bottom. Power is up top. So this would be the q root of x squared. Exponential form. 5 is the root, 3 is the power, so this is a to the 3 fifths. All right, 26 and 27. For the most part, people are really good at these. Um, make sure that you show work, if you can, on the test, um, because work will give you partial credit if you accidentally make a mistake somewhere. So add that 5 over to the other side, and the way that we get rid of that um, square root is we square both sides. Square, square. Do unto one side of the equation as you do unto the other. So you get 6x plus 1 equals 5 squared, which is 25. Subtract 1, divide by 6. x is 4. And you can check your answer if you want to. If not, that's okay. All right, we're going to raise both sides of this one to the 2 thirds. Now, as you notice, this is a cube root, so I don't have to worry about any plus or minuses or two answers. It's just going to be one answer here. So, see, 7x minus 3 equals 8 to the 2 thirds. Well, 8 to the 2 thirds is the cube root of 8 squared. The cube root of 8 is 2, 2 squared is 4. Add 3, divide by 7. Now, you know that you got it wrong if you got some ugly number, because none of these have turned out. I mean, they can be, but I like to give you nice answers for your test, especially. All right, was that it for that page? Okay, next page. Last one, last page. All right, here we go. We're going to simplify all of these. So start by taking the cube root of 8, which is 2. And then remember, when you're taking the cube root of x to the 6, you're going to take 3 and divide it into the exponent. So 3 goes into 6 exactly 2 times. And then 3 goes into 10 3 times with 1 remainder. So that means it's going to be y cubed and then you're going to have one of the y's left over at the end. And then don't forget, don't forget this little 3 right here. It's important. It's the cube root, not the square root. 
All right, now we're doing cube roots. So uh, 81 is 27 times 3. 27 is a perfect cube. So you take the cube root of 27 and then leave the 3 back. Okay, now let's worry about all the variables. We're going to do x to the fourth. So 3 goes into 4 one time with one remainder. 3 goes into 9 exactly three times. And 3 won't go into 2, and so z squared stays left behind. Number 30. Okay, we've got to come up with a perfect square that goes into 72. You might be thinking 9, which is true, but 36 is bigger. So we'll take the square root of 36, which is 6, and the 2 stays back. All right, now there's a little pretend 2 sitting in here. It's a square root. So 2 goes into 7 three times with one remainder, and 2 goes into 10 exactly five times. No remainders left. 31. Let's multiply these together. 5 times 20 is 100. x times x squared is x cubed. And y to the 6. We add up our exponents when we multiply powers. So the square root of 100, ooh, that's a perfect square. That's 10. 2 goes into that 3 exactly one time with one remainder. And then 2 goes into 6 exactly three times with no remainders. So there's your answer. Oops, I highlighted that when I meant to erase it. There we go. All right. 32. Multiply the numbers on the outside together. 2 times 5 is 10. Multiply the numbers on the inside together. 3 times 15 is 45 x to the first times x to the fifth gives me x to the sixth, and y to the fourth times y is y to the fifth. All right, now once you've multiplied, now you need to simplify. 45 is 9 times 5. Take the square root of 9, you get 3. When you bring that square root of 9, which is 3 on the outside, you multiply 3 times 10. And then we're going to leave 5 behind. All right, 2 goes into this 6 right here three times, no remainders, and then two goes into that five right there, um, how many times? Two, with one remainder left. There you go. Okay, 33. Divide these first. 40, they're both cube roots, so you're allowed to divide them. 40 divided by five is eight. The x is reduce, and y to the fifth over y is y to the fourth. Now we simplify. Cube root of 8 is 2. 3 goes into that 4 exactly one time with 1 still in the cube root. We're almost done. All right, 34. This one, as you notice, you can't divide anything. You can't divide 2x into 8 or rad 3. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by 2x. This is called rationalizing. We're going to rationalize this. So up top we get 8 rad 6x. On the bottom, rad 2x times rad 2x is 2x. Now if you leave it like that, I will mark you off a little bit because you can, like that, you can divide 8 by 2. 8 by 2 is 4 rad 6x over x. Okay, don't, don't cross out these x's here. Don't cross those out because this is not x, it's rad x up top. And so that would be your answer. Your answer would be 4 rad 6x over x. There we go. All right, for 35, we need to rationalize this also. So rationalize this um, by multiplying top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. And the conjugate of the denominator looks exactly the same as the denominator, but it differs just by the inside sign. So this is a minus. I'm going to make my conjugate's going to have a plus. And then we FOIL it out. 2 times 5 is 10. Outside gives me 2 rad 3. Inside gives me 5 rad 3. And then rad 3 times rad 3 is 3. Now, conjugates have a shortcut. All you have to do is multiply at the first and the last. And it's always going to be a minus in between those numbers. 
And then you simplify the top. I've got a 10 and a 3 that want to get together and make 13. And then we have 2 rad 3s and 5 rad 3s will give us oops, 7 rad 3. 7 rad 3. And this is all over 22. There you go. It's completely rationalized when you have no radicals remaining in the denominator. Okay, and the last two, 36, this is a FOIL problem. 3 times 4 is 12. Outside is negative 18 rad 5. Inside is 8 rad 5. And everyone's going to be pretty good at those. It's just the last step. This is the hard part. You have to take 2 times negative 6. And so that's negative 12. And then you do rad 5 times rad 5, which is 5. Okay, so then you get 12 uh, minus uh, 12 times 5, which is 60. So you get negative 48, and a negative 18 and a positive 8 make negative 10 rad 5s. Okay, for our last one, we're going to combine any like terms. And when you look at this, you can't combine these because they're not like terms. In order to combine, they have to be exactly the same radical, so square roots, and radicand, things inside the square roots, and that's not the case here. But as we know, these are not in simplest form. So rad 12 is really 2 rad 3. 27 is 9 times 3, and the square root of 9 is 3. And we take the square root, we multiply it to get negative 12 rad 3, and then I have a positive 2 rad 3. And so, oops, don't do that. And so 2 minus 12 is negative 10, plus another 2 would give us negative 8 rad 3. All right, well, I hope I did them all correctly. I did them really fast, as you know. If you have any questions, please come to the review session at 740 in the morning. Bring coffee and donuts for your favorite math teacher.